Bleacher Report came out with their annual Top 100 list, and three Chicago Bulls were named to that list. We're going to talk about that and how they need to play much better together this upcoming season. We're also going to ask if the Bulls can finally make their move in a tight Eastern Conference this season, and Stacey King thinks that Patrick Williams is poised for a breakout season. We'll talk about that all and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. But more importantly, you can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for the day. First up, Bleach Report has come out with their top 100 list, and Zach Levine, DeMar DeRozan, and Nikola Vucevic all raked on that list. Vuce came in at 81st. Uh, Zach Levine came in at 44th, with him being the 16th highest paid player in the league this upcoming season. And DeMar DeRozan ranked two spots above Zach Levine at 42nd. And here's the thing, right? And this is goes to the, you know, the sometimes fans and things like that, that that talk about the Bulls not having talent on this roster. And not that this top 100 list means everything. The Bulls absolutely have talent on this roster. I don't think that's ever been the question. The question is, how do you bring it all together? And while we had a, br- a brief glimpse of that with Lonzo Ball running the point, the fact of the matter is that we it's left much to be desired, right? Last year, yes, they had a what a better point differential as a team overall, but the Chicago Bulls, these were the three most played a three-man combination of any team in the NBA, and they did not get the results that they needed. That We've seen a a huge sample size of them together. It comes down to we need to change things in the offense, right? We need to utilize them better in some positions, and somebody is going to have to defer. Now, that has been Nikola Vucevic in many ways. The first two years of them being together is that Nikola Vucevic has been the one to sacrifice the most of his game. Zach Levine hasn't been healthy, and DeMar DeRozan has been, you know, basically having – you know, uh, being becoming the, uh, Billy Donovan's favorite tool and things like that. Like overall, while we have three of the, of the top 100 players on in, in the league according to this list, and I'm sure they they've all been in, listed on that on list from ESPN. Every time somebody comes out with a top 100, these three players are listed on it. But the fact of the matter remains, we have not seen the results of having three of the top 100 players in the NBA. Theoretically, we have not seen that the, the results of that sustained over a long period of time. And c- considering the questions like health, right? Zach Levine, DeMar, Vooch, all coming into the season fully healthy, at least in the training camp, fully healthy. Um, you you, you want to you see better out of it. And as much as this front office is betting on continuity, that must mean that your coach has to get better out of them. You've now went out and got your point guard in Javon Carter. We'll see if he wins that starting position, but overall, you need to get better out of it. Lonzo Ball is not walking through that door, right? You haven't gone out and made the acquisition of a big-time point guard at all, so you have to now operate in the margins. You have to improve the way that you play together, and that may mean adjusting the system some. It's good that they're named to that cool. It is what it is. It It gives us a talking point, but overall, if that doesn't, the result, this is a season where the results matter the most. That's it, the results. I don't care about rankings. I almost don't care what each player averages per game. I care about the the win column, right? And that's what it ultimately is going to be the biggest judge of this team. The, the, the deciding factor in judging this team this season is the, what do you do in the winning column, right? How do you look? Do you make a move up the East? Do you move from a playing team to a playoff team? Like, do you if you are a playing team, do you make it out that playing tournament? Where's the improvement? That's what we need to see. And so lists like this, it's cool. Like I said, it gives fans a talking point, especially more casual ones like to talk about and the ones that don't watch the game. But at the end of the day, it's just this. The results need to be on the basketball court, regardless of what it takes to get there, whether it's sacrifice, whether it's stepping up, whether it's becoming a a, a more efficient score from some of these players, whatever it is, right, we need to see better out of it. And like we say, and I I keep saying it's it's all fine and dandy, but one of the people who needs to step up their game the most, and I'm not saying – that he's the only one or he's the biggest issue, I'm not saying. I know some people do say that, and I'm not here to argue their point, right? But the fact of the matter is, Billy Donovan has to step up a, a, as a coach this season for the Chicago Bulls, for the development, for the, for the, the u- utilizing better player utilization, drawing up better uh, last-minute plays, all of this, all everything, right? And yes, the players need to step up as well, but we need to see a big impact and a big change from the way that this team has been coached, right? The offensive system of this team, while it generates open three-point shots that we haven't had players to take uh, 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 consistently, and hopefully now we have those players, but like we need to be have, have better utilization of the skill set of the players that we have on this team. And so, like I said, with 
with wins being the ultimate judge for this team this up this upcoming season, at least in my opinion, you got to ask yourself, can the Bulls realistically may, make a move up the standings? When you look at last season, right, five games separated seeds six through ten. And when you look at seeds five through ten, which would help you avoid that playing scenario, only seven games separated those teams. We've talked so much about the 17 games that the Chicago Bulls lost by five points or less. Eight of those games being a score or less. Like, we, we talked about that, right? We, we know what that means. We've talked about it. But this is the year that the Bulls have to make a significant movement one way or another. And I say one way or another because if this team does, for some reason, miss the play-in, like a ESPN predicts, you have your own first-round pick. What then do you do, right? Who do you draft with that lottery pick? How does that, how does that help you change the outlook of this team? Answers need to come this season. And I don't mean just the short-term answers. I mean more long-term answers. I don't think that the Bulls are that far off from being able to avoid the playing. That's just my thought. I think that this team is going to get uh, about 45 wins this season. That's what my prediction is for this team. I think that they have that ability to do that. Of course, health plays a big part in that, but you got to show it. Everything comes down to, to the win column for this team this season. I, and listen, yes, development from P-Will, Kobe, Io, Dalen Terry, Julian Phillips is I would love to see development and meaningful development for those players as well, which we're going to talk about Patrick Williams here in a second. I would absolutely love to see that. But ultimately, this core, this core, this veteran core that you have is going to be judged off how many wins you can get this season. What is the next step in the, in the development of this continuity, right? Teams that, 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 that maintain continuity, you want to do so because you think you can get better with, with another year of development and in in those players playing together. If that doesn't come for this team, this season, listen, I'm not saying that a, a blow. You guys know I'm very against a full rebuild. I'm very against blowing it all up. I don't think it ha it's happening. I don't think it's realistic with this front office. I just don't see that happening in a major way, right? But you got to do something. At some point, probably got to take over, right? And so we can talk about all the chips, all the talking points, all everything that this team could have and could use and, and stuff like that. But it all matters for not if it doesn't come and we don't improve, right? So. You know, ultimately, we'll see, right? You, you decided to improve in the margins. You brought in an needed three-point shooting. You brought in better point-of-attack defenders to help with that half-court defense. The Bulls should be better in those areas. But at the end of the day, right, whether you're looking at the coach, whether you're looking at the front office, whether you're looking at the players, whether you're looking at a mix of all three, somebody, something needs to have a drastic step up for this team so we can have a better outlook overall, right? And I think this team is going to surprise some people. I really do. And I hope that they prove that right. And we'll end up seeing. We're going to be talking about it. You guys know we're going to be here day in and day out. But Stacey King was on CHGO Bulls. Shout out to Matt and Big Dave over there. And uh, he said this. I'm going to play a little bit of clip from him now. It really boils down to, to Patrick now. It's, it's, you can bring in everybody to talk to him. I mean, he's, been, he's worked out with DeMar Rosen for the last two summers, getting up at 5 in the morning in L.A., okay? <laughs> That's fair, yeah. So, so now it's time for Patrick. I mean, it, it's, it's time now. You've been here long enough now, and I love the kid. You know, no one now should have to tell you to bring it every night and go out there and do what you do best because you, you've you shown glimpses that you can be the player the Bulls drafted you to be. So it's now it's just going out there. And, you know, I like I used to liken it to like, you know, being, a, you know, having a Ferrari, you know, and Billy Donovan is trying to learn how to, to drive a Ferrari because he's been driving, you know, he's been driving a regular car, you know, like a Hyundai or something. So, yeah, jump in the Ferrari and that's Patrick Williams. You know, you, you don't know how to shift gears. You don't have now it's time for them to figure it out. Now it's time for that Ferrari to go and rip like it's on the auto bomb. Because I think, honestly, and this is my opinion, um, and I didn't sleep in the Holiday Inn to come up with this opinion, but <laughs> I, will, <laughs> I will say this. I will say this. I expect Patrick Williams to have a breakout season this year. I would mm. be totally surprised if he doesn't have a breakout season. I, I, just, I just think he's going to figure it out. And sometimes, again, because he's such a soft-spoken person, I think he's deferred. I think he's held back his game because of the older guys, because of the respect that he has for DeMar, Zach, and Vooch. I think that he is, he's held his game back. I think now that he's been in the league long enough now and he's heard all the talk and trade him. And, and you know, listen – basketball players listen to talk radio. They listen to, I didn't have social media. I got, I mean, people are just writing on tablets like Moses. <laughs> we found out somebody didn't like us and didn't like our game. We just, we were like Moses. We, we had to walk up to the, not talk to the tablet. Uh, they, they 
uh, Will Purdue. Oh, we need a new bench. We had to find that on a tablet, bro. <laughs> up to the burning bush and come down a hill and, and let everybody know what the tablet said. Now they got social media. Social media, everybody, everybody, all these kids are listening to social media, man. They, everybody listens to social media. They know what they're saying. They know what people are saying about them. That's motivation enough. And I love like Stacey King A is just uh, he's the one, the goat right he he's one of the greatest to ever do it and I love the insight that he has I love how he sh how he relates things to his own story and you know him being a player he's just really good at just kind of bringing everything home and to say that Patrick Williams this is the year that he needs to break out and you know even saying that Patrick Williams has deferred some and out of respect for Demar Vooch and all those players and I get that right and I don't think that this system or we are in a scenario where Patrick Williams can break out as a scorer I just don't think that we had, that he's going to get the number of shots to break out as a score. He can definitely improve shooting, right? And this, the, that goes back to some of the things we've talked about wanting to see Patrick Williams improve on. Be a better rebounder. Block more shots, right? Don't pass up as many shots for sure. Keep being that three-point shooter that you were last season. Take it more confidently, right? Take players off the dribble when you have the mismatch and opportunities. That's what I want to see from Patrick Williams, right? Is that, like I said in yesterday's episode, whoever is in front of you, whether you're defending them or they're defending you, no matter what it is, they're trying to stop you from what you want to do. Patrick Williams needs to stop and take it personal that they are trying to stop him and do not allow them to stop him from what he's trying to do. Patrick Williams or any young player, I think we focus a lot on Patrick Williams because, yes, he's been here the longest, but to up this bull ceiling, you need any of the young players to step up, to take a step up and to drastically improve the bull ceiling and outlook in the future. Ideally, you want two of them to, right? Kobe White took that step last year. Now, if he can make that step and bring in the scoring that he had in the second half of the season and make that more consistent with the better defense, the passing, the dribbling that he did, great. We want to see that for a full season. But can P. Will, Dalen, Julian Phillips, Io, what? Io who's going to be fighting for minutes, can these players come in and grab a role? Can they do that, right? And we, we're waiting on Patrick Williams' breakout season, and realistically, his breakout season may not go into one of the core three are gone as far as scoring-wise. But that does not mean that Patrick Williams can grow in so many other aspects of his game and how he can impact winning without necessarily scoring a ton of points. Double digit points, cool, right? I'd say anything between 20, 10 and 12 points for Patrick Williams, that's cool with what his role is on this team, right? In that, what his role is on this team. I don't think anything magically unlocks by pulling him off the bench or anything like that until his mindset is unlocked. That's all that matters. And I think that's what one of the things that I pulled from Stacey King's comments there, right? And yeah, he talked about like like B Billy Donovan learning to drive, what he say, a Ferrari, I think is what he said in that. But like, while, yes, Billy Donovan empowering Patrick Williams and the young players a little bit more is something that we've all called for for quite a while. And we want to see for Patrick Williams and for the, the development of the young players on this team. But you got to go out and grab it. You have to be able to contribute in a way, right? And this is what Io did a lot his rookie year. He, he was so good defensively that he got more opportunities on the offensive side of the ball because you could not deny that he was positively helping this team in the ways that he can defensively. And that's what I want to see from Patrick Williams. First, before anything, before we worry about the scoring or anything, get your level of play to, to a degree that, that Billy Donovan, like him, the thought of him not playing, the thought of him not starting you is, is asinine. Get to that first. Then use that opportunity that you're getting on the court to take the next step up. That's what's going to up the ceiling of the Chicago Bulls team. I know a lot of fans calling for rebuilds, things like that. It's not coming. But one of the things that we can realistically hope for is that Patrick Williams, or like I said, this conversation kind of started with the Patrick Williams because of the clip with Stacey King. But let's be clear here. You want one of these young players to finally hit. These raw, athletic young players that Billy Donovan's been drafting that, you know, with Daylin, uh, you know, it's the shooting that you really look at with him. And, you know, him calming down some. Julian Phillips hasn't gotten a chance to get on the court. Io DeSumo just, I think that confidence is a big part with Io DeSumo. We need to empower these young players if we want this future to be extended for the Chicago Bulls. And it can, it, they can do it. They have the potential to do it. But like I say, potential is not always realized. And just because you have the potential to be this amazing player in the NBA, right? And again, I'm not even saying star level player. I'm saying a solid player in the NBA. Patrick Williams and all these players have the potential to do that, and then let's build on that after we do that consistently. But you got to start hitting it at some point. That ceiling, that potential drops every single year. Now, Patrick Williams still an extremely young player, extremely young, and a player that has not been prioritized in any way 
in in his game with this team. But at the same time, you got to find a way to grow outside of that. If that's your role, right, and you understand this is my role, I'm not going to be prioritized on the offensive side of the ball, how are you going to make a name for yourself? We need to see Patrick Williams come in and really understand and do those things. Same with Dalen, right? I want to see Dalen be, yeah, the shot questionable, but can you be so good defensively and in transition that Billy Donovan is looking at you and say, you offer us the best situation for us to win these games and get in these games. That's what these young players need to look at and try to do this upcoming season. Do Find what you do great. Find the way that you can impact the game no matter what that is, whether it's defense, whether it's offense, whether it's rebounding, whether it's steals, whether it's deflections, whether it's getting players open in transition and, and getting great assists. Whatever that great thing that you can do to help contribute and add to winning to that team, do that and then do it again and then do it again and then repeat it and then do it over the course of a season and then we can build on top of that. The question marks got to stop. We got to start getting some answers to the questions on this team via the young players, via everything. And this is what I hope this season ends up being for the Chicago Bulls. Let me know what you guys think on everything down below. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for mailback episodes on Saturdays and Sundays, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And we've been doing it for two years, and I thank you guys for that. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media.